Glad you're all here. Really good to see you. Um, let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we can come to this place to, uh, to be together. Uh, we miss that so much. And so we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity we have to share with each other, to encourage each other. Thank you, Lord, that we can come here to worship in so many different ways. We can lift our, our prayers before you. We can read your word, let it speak to our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that your word would um, speak to our hearts in a special way this morning. Thank you, Lord, for keeping each one of us safe. Thank you, Lord, for keeping those we care about safe. I mean, we just pray for your continued hand uh, upon us and upon our families. And um, we just pray, Lord, that you um, would forgive us for the things that we've done this week that have hurt you, hurt others, and hurt ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, for the things that we failed to do that you would have wanted us to do. Um, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you are always near. And I pray, Lord, that by the time we leave um, today, we will know not only the nearness of each other, but we would know the nearness of your spirit in a, a new and a vibrant way. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. So we're still not singing together. We're still uh, waiting to hear uh, a definite yes on that from the powers that be. So um, I'm not singing a solo this morning. I'm going to do something a little bit different. Everybody's like, oh, no. There are going to be some little tunes that in what I do that you may hear that may sound familiar. If they sound familiar and you want to hum along, by which I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. Please hum along with me, but uh, resist the temptation to, uh, to sing, because I know that's something that we're all still, not all, but many of us are waiting for. Sometimes, sometimes the church at worship sounds like electric guitars and kick drums. Never do that again. <laughs> Brownie's honor. Sometimes the church at worship sounds like the turning of pages in a hymn book. It sounds like an organ or a piano. And it sounds like four part harmony. Then sings my song, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my song. worship sounds like a room full of people singing with no organ or no piano, but singing from their hearts. 
like our friends in Cuba. Sometimes the church at worship sounds like a tambourine and people singing back in call and response the words of one of the great old gospel songs. Amen, amen, hey, see him at the Jordan, amen, where John's baptizing, amen. Saving all sinners, amen, amen, amen. And sometimes, sometimes the church at worship sounds like a crackling bonfire and the twang of a banjo. This is the closest I have. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself, and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Sometimes, Church at worship sounds like one voice singing along with the car radio. at worship sounds like a congregation singing back just hallelujah in response to the words that the pastor has read from scripture none of them that wait on thee lord shall be disgraced show O lord your ways to me and teach me your paths Alleluia, Alleluia. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Sometimes, the church at worship sounds like whispers, whispered prayers, whispered scriptures, because those words, if they are overheard, are dangerous and illegal. Whisper this prayer with me this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes the church at worship Sounds like silence. The people who wrote the words of scripture understood this. They understood that the church can worship in silence. 
they wrote things like, search me, Lord, and know my heart. See if there is any wicked way in me. Man sees what is visible, but the Lord looks on the heart. I, Yahweh, says the Lord, I examine the mind. I test the heart. The word of the Lord is able to judge the ideas and thoughts of the heart. We can worship in silence. And we're going to take some time this morning to do just that. We're going to participate in something that the church has been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years, a form of, it's called sacred reading. Sometimes it's called Lectio Divina, which is just Latin for sacred reading. And sacred reading sort of has four stages to it. We read, we reflect, we respond, and we receive. The reading part of it, we're going to read together a short passage of scripture that'll be on the screen. We will all read that together out loud. The second phase of it, reflect. I'm going to read a phrase and then pause for a moment and then read another phrase and pause so that in reflecting on these passages of scriptures, you can look at themselves and see your own reflection. See, do you see yourself? Do I see myself in these words? Is there something in this passage of scripture that is for me? The third phase of it is responding. We will take a minute to just sit in silence and pray. Talk to God. Be very intentional about talking to God about what it is that you saw of yourself in these words of scripture and see what he has to say to you about those things. And then the final phase is to receive. And I will just close in prayer and invite God to imprint these things on our hearts. So we begin by reading together these words. You have encircled me. You have placed your hand on me. This extraordinary knowledge is beyond me. It is lofty. I am unable to reach it. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there. So those words will stay on the screen. But I want to encourage you to, to close your eyes, if you're comfortable doing that, to just take some time to think about these words as we hear them, as we pray them, and as God speaks to our hearts. You have encircled me. You have placed your hand on me. You have encircled me and you have placed your hand on me. This extraordinary knowledge, this lofty knowledge, I am unable to reach it. It is beyond me.
This extraordinary knowledge is beyond me. It is lofty, and I cannot reach it. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there. Where can I go to escape your spirit? If I go up to heaven, you are there. Where can I flee from your presence? If I make my bed in the grave, you are there. You have encircled me. You have placed your hand on me. Let's take a minute just to, uh, to pray. Talk to God about those verses and see what he might have to say to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you speak to us through our silence with your words. Thank you that you can fill our silence with your truth. We thank you that you have gone to so much trouble to speak those words and preserve them for us so that we can understand what it is that you have for us and how so many believers before us have walked the same paths. Heavenly Father, we receive your words this morning. We let them sink into our hearts and into our minds so that when we leave here, they will come with us into the world. That whatever it is that you have said to each of us this morning will still be there Monday morning and Tuesday and the rest of the week, no matter what is happening around us. Your silent, words need never leave us and we thank you and we thank you and we thank you in jesus name i pray 
Amen. So Ruth led us through a reading of a part of the first half of Psalm 139. Let me read to you the first 12 verses. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Psalms that speak to our situation in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you take these words and that you would relate them to us. Help us, Lord, to, as Ruth has said, to see ourselves in the words of these Psalms, to see ourselves in this poem by David. And I pray, Lord, that as you guide us through seeing ourselves, that you would move in our hearts and help us to leave with something this day that would last for eternity. Lord, please give me the strength to do this. Take this time, it's yours. Do whatever you like with it in Jesus' name. Amen. So the book of Psalms in the Bible is the longest book in the Bible, 150 chapters. It's actually 150 poems that were originally set to music. And of course, through history, the, the music is lost, but the words of the poems are still here. They are 150 songs where the author could express his emotions, express his feelings, express his hurt and his pain. It also applies to her. Her, her All the psalms, psalms were probably written by men, but it applies to, to women as well. The psalmist could express his faith to God and his praise to God. Because they are songs that express real emotion from people of real faith, they are often the portions of the Bible that we can relate to the most, we can connect with the most. Often portions, they are often portions that can help us express what we're going through. And through the psalms, they point us to a God of strength, and a God of unfailing love. These are songs and poems that are often spoken in the first person. And therefore, they are psalms and poems that we can easily personalize and make our own. That's what I want to do for you today from my perspective. And hopefully, maybe you can see yourself in it too. We want to try and personalize Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. There's an old Cliff Richard song that is a prayer to you, Lord, that says you know me better than I know myself. And as much as I try to be self-aware, I have so many blind spots in understanding who I am and why I do things. But you, Lord, have searched those blind spots. You have searched the areas in my life that I'm proud to show you and the areas in my life that I'm ashamed to show you. And you know me. You know me better than I know myself. I could put on airs in front of people and, and try to put my best foot forward as much as possible, but, but I can't play games with you, Lord. You know me. You know what I'm capable of. You, you know the sin that I can so easily fall into. 
You know the wonderful gifts you've given me, the birthright that you've bestowed upon me. You, you know what I'm able to do when I give it my all. And I need to be reminded of that. Reminded of the, of the purpose that you have for my life. When, when, one of those times when I get down on myself. You know me, the good and the bad. And still you love me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You discern my going out and my lying down. You'd think that the God of the universe would be completely preoccupied with holding the galaxies in order. That you, Lord, would be most concerned with with the big issues of life, with with wars and famines and COVID-19 and racism and, and the world economy and the state of the church universal. Yet amidst all these things, you, you know when I sit and you know when I rise. You know when I'm lying down. <laughs> you know when I'm coming and going, even if I don't know whether I'm coming or going. You are aware of all of the routine things in my life, from a car that won't start to the bills that need to be paid, from the most boring part of my job to how I spend my leisure time. You are fully aware of each and every moment of my day, which fills me with wonder and joy that you, the God of the universe, would be concerned about the little things that concern me, and which fills me with dismay and even dread when I think about the many hours wasted on things that don't really matter when all is said and done. And you see it all, and yet, You love me. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You know my thoughts when they begin, long before they morph into attitudes and actions and behaviors, which is exciting. I can invite invite you to be a part of my thought process, invite you to guide my thoughts and direct them in the way that you would want them to be because you know them from the very beginning. You know, Lord, for years I've prayed, but for years I've also done something that I like to call thinking in God's presence. It's such a joy to know and to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you've guided my thinking in a particular situation and I know the directions of my thoughts have come from you. And yet I know that there are times that my thoughts take me very far from the purpose you have for me, far from where you want me to be. And sometimes with your help, I could change that train of thought very quickly. And other times I let my thoughts take me far. Lord, let the fact that you know my thoughts motivate me to always bring them into your captivity, to bring them under your lordship, that they may lead into actions and attitudes and behaviors that please you. It's hard to grasp that you know my words completely before they come off my tongue. This must be proof of the gift of free will that you give us, or I wouldn't be putting my foot in my mouth as often as I do. Yet nothing I say, Lord, is a surprise to you. Whether my words are received as apples of gold that encourage and inspire others, or whether my words are arrows that pierce and hurt. Like my thoughts, may the fact that you know my words before they leave my mouth motivate me to daily submit all that I say to you, that my words may please you and bless others. You know my thoughts for good and for ill. You know my words for good and for ill, for better and for worse. Still you love me. You are familiar with all my ways. Lord, there's nothing better I don't think, than really being understood, than being known for who you really are. This may sound terrible, Lord, but but over the years at Christmas, when I receive some gifts from family and friends who should really know me, there are times I open my gift, scratch my head internally, and I go, do they even know me? 
Then there are other times when a gift just hits the nail on the head and it's perfect. There's something especially profound in knowing that I'm known. And Lord, as a single person, there are times I feel that I'm really missing that, to know someone deeply by virtue of sharing my entire life with them. But I know that even married people can feel that deep loneliness that can come from not really being understood. Lord, I remember a music video I used to play for my youth in my youth groups, and it was called, You Get Me. And Lord, I thank you that when no one else gets me, you get me. You know what makes me tick. You're familiar with all my ways and my quirks and my desires and my dreams and all that I want my life to be. And sometimes it's hard to remember that because, well, I'm human. And sometimes being known by a human who is standing right in front of me can seem more tangible, more immediate, you know? But as much as another person can know me, as much as I can know myself, that pales in comparison with how much you know me and understand me. Lord, when I have a hard time understanding myself, please explain me to me. Show me who you've made me to be. Guide me in the purpose you have for me. Help me know that you get me and that you love me. Lord, you hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand on me. There are times I just want to run and scream. Times when I just want to get away from it all. And I know that it's in those times when I can become very vulnerable. And I get hurt. I get hurt by my own actions. I get hurt by the actions of others. And in those times, you hem me in. You put your arms around me, and you lay your hand upon me, and let me cry it out until I know I'm safe. It makes me think. You remember that time back in Montreal at Tyndale when we took that group of inner city kids up north tobogganing? A bunch of our English black kids got into a fight with a busload of white French kids, and I had no idea how to stop it and what to do. And I remember one little guy, he was probably seven or eight years old, who was so angry that he was bawling and screaming and he just wanted to run and get into the fight full, filled with boys that were so much bigger and older than him. And I couldn't stop the whole fight, but I could stop him. And all I could think to do was to hold him tight and keep saying to him, it's okay. And he squirmed and he fought and he cried tried to get away from me till finally he calmed down and didn't get in the fight and he was safe. And Lord, I think sometimes that's how I am with you. I just want to fight back. In frustration, I just want to cry and run and flail about. But you hem me in. You take me in your arms and you hold me. And I try to fight my way free, but you just keep whispering, it's okay. You lay your hand upon me, and I find your peace, and I find your safety. You would think at this stage in my life I wouldn't need that that much. I mean, I'm not seven or eight years old anymore. I should know better. But I guess you call me your child for a reason. And even in those times when I'm kicking and screaming and crying to get away, you lay your hand upon me, and let me know that you've got this. And it's okay. And I know you love me. Such knowledge is too wonderful, too lofty for me to wrap my head around sometimes. But Lord, I need to wrap my head around this. You know me. You know who I am. You know the person I can become with your help. You feel the joy when I follow in your footsteps and I I step out of my comfort zone to serve you. You know the shame and frustration that I feel when I fall short. In everything there is about my life, you know me and you love me. 
And even though in my heart of hearts I know that you know me, there are still times when I can doubt. Times when I wonder, where are you? Where are you in the loneliness and isolation that the pandemic brings? Where are you in the fear that grips the hearts of people? Where are you when family members face difficult health crises, when friends get divorced, when children make poor decisions and get hurt? Where are you when businesses fail and life always seems to be a struggle? I know you know me, God. But how does that play out in my day-to-day life? Where are you? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? These are rhetorical questions that your psalmist answers in the following verses, but but the implied answer is nowhere. Lord, I know that there is nowhere where your spirit is not. Nowhere where your presence is not. Thank you, Lord, that you promised to never leave me nor forsake me. And Lord, when I feel unknown, unseen, unremarkable, remind me that you know me, you see me, and that you've created me remarkable in your eyes. Your Holy Spirit that comforts and gives peace is always there. I cannot go anywhere from your Spirit. Your Holy Spirit that teaches me your word and your ways and reminds me of what I need to know, when I need to know it, is always there. I cannot go anywhere from your Spirit. Your Holy Spirit that gives me the power to share your love and do your will is always there. I cannot go anywhere from your Spirit. Your Holy Spirit that brings conviction, a godly guilt that leads to repentance, is always there. I cannot go anywhere from your Spirit. Conviction. Lord, that's the part of your Spirit's presence that isn't always comfortable. But Lord, please never let the conviction end. Never let my heart grow cold towards your convicting Spirit. Take from me my heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. Lord, thank you for those times when you were the hound of heaven, when you sought me when I was far from you and brought me home. Lord, I pray that you continue to be the hound of heaven for those that I love who are so far from you. They're on all of our minds every day, and yet even that does not compare to the thoughts that you think of our friends and family, thoughts that are as numerous as grains of sand on the beach. Thank you that our loved ones cannot flee from your presence cannot flee from the voice of your spirit speaking to their conscience. And when they ask, God, where are you? May they hear a gentle voice from your spirit saying, this is the way. Walk with me in it. Where can I go from your spirit? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. Lord, when life is going amazing, when my head is in the clouds with joy, you are there to share in the joy of the blessings that you've brought to me. Yet those can also be the times when I can easily forget you. The question I think that's more often heard during those times is not me asking, where are you, God? But it's you asking, where are you, Jeff? Lord, help me to make gratitude a daily discipline. Help me always to be grateful to you and to those around me. Thank you, Lord, for those times of joy, times when the pieces of my life just fit together and and the smile wells up from inside of me that can't be just contained only on my lips. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. In the lowest of the low times in my life, Lord, I know that you are there. And sometimes, Lord, I see what other people go through and how they have the strength to make it through. And and I wonder, can I do that? If I was faced with that, would I have the strength to make it through? But then I realized, Lord, two things. One is that you always provide me with what I need when I need it. And the second is that there are other people 
often looking at me and my life right now and asking the same question, how can you make it through? You, I know, are at work in my life, giving me what I need even when I don't realize it. And you will be at work in my life, giving me what I need when I face depths that seem too hard to cross. You are there, Lord, even when I make my bed in the depths. I mean, it's one thing to find myself in a deep and desperate situation. It's quite another thing when I purposely put myself there. When I decided to get so comfortable in the depths away from you that I could make my bed there. Lord, please forgive me for those times. And thank you, Lord, that even when I find myself in trouble because of a conscious decision that I made, you are still there, knowing me, and loving me, and wanting to lead me home. And Lord, I think now of people I know who have knowingly walked away from you, people I know who have made their bed in the depths and seem perfectly happy there as far as they're concerned, yet they're so unaware, so unaware of what they're doing to themselves, so unaware of the damage they are doing to themselves and to others, so unaware of the birthright, your purpose for their life that they're missing out on. Lord, please open their eyes and let them see that you are there. I could take the wings of dawn and settle on the far side of the sea and you will be there. You know, Lord, I've only lived in three different cities in my whole life. I haven't so much taken the wings of dawn as much as I've traveled the asphalt of the 401. Yet I know, Lord, that there is nowhere where you were not. I could travel the far reaches of this world and I would still find you. And I'd still find your people. Sometimes we move in life in response to your leading and that is a special thing. But sometimes, Lord, I know that we move in life sometimes to run away from your leading. But like Jonah in the Bible, you follow us. Your presence follows us and your voice calls out to us because you love us and you want what's best for us. Yes, I've only lived in three cities. Yet I know there have been times when my heart has moved to the far side of the sea away from you. And yet even there, Lord, your hand guided me. Your right hand has held me fast. Your grace your grace is so amazing, giving me what I don't deserve, guiding me in your way, showing me your purpose for me, even when I was running from it. Thank you, Lord, that your guiding hand is always there for us. Thank you, Lord, that your right hand, your strong hand of power is holding tight to me, caring for me, and protecting me from this world and from myself. Thank you, Lord, for guiding me and holding me even in the dark times. Uncertainty can breed tar dark times, and I think these last few months have had more uncertainty than the previous 10 years. Well, hang on, Lord, <laughs> I should take that back. But still, these months have definitely been uncertain, and it feels like we're flying blind. Sickness and illness can bring on dark times when we are flying blind and dealing with feelings and fears and fatigue that we've never felt before. But even in those dark times, you are guiding. You are holding me fast. Job uncertainty brings dark times. Transitions in school and work can be dark, not in a sense of foreboding, but in a sense of uncertainty. And yet, as we step into that uncertainty, that darkness, we know, Lord, that the darkness is just like light to you. Nothing catches you by surprise. The word oops is not in your vocabulary. You are beyond time and you see our lives not as one point in time as, as I see it, but, but as this beautiful completed work of art, a canvas that you are completing in our lives day by day. And Lord, I know there are times when we as humans actually like the dark. 
You know, we figure it's that place where we could hide from you, where you can't see us and we could do whatever we want. That's kind of blunt, kind of uncomfortable to admit, but I can be like that sometimes. And Lord, let me never, ever, ever crave the darkness. Lord, surround me in your beautiful light where I may, I feel, I may feel your hand and know your guidance where I can know the steps to take in life because I can see them so clearly before me in your light. May I never deceive myself into thinking that for some reason you're not there just because it's dark. You're always there, always knowing, always aware of my ways, and always loving me. Lord, this is a very weird time right now. A lot of things we thought we knew for sure aren't so sure anymore. Many of our steps forward are steps into the darkness of uncertainty. Many of us feel lonely and unknown. Some of us are wondering where you are. Lord, thank you that you know me. Thank you that you know us. Thank you that you are always with us. Thank you that through everything, your hand will guide us, and your right hand will hold us. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I hide from your love? When I am hurting, it comforts me to know that nothing can take away your love. Nothing can take your love. Lord, we are so thankful that there is nowhere where your spirit is not. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, for your spirit that is here wanting to speak to us individually in a very real and powerful way to remind us that you know us, you get us, you understand us, you love us. You walk with us through the routine parts of our lives. And even when times are dark, the darkness is as light to you. You are there guiding us. Your hand is guiding us. Your right hand is holding us fast. And Lord, I just pray right now that as we spend a moment or two in your presence, pouring out our heart to you and listening to you, that the presence of your spirit in our lives would be such a strong reality and that you would speak to us and give us what we need now when we need it. Please take a few minutes in silence before the Lord. Let him speak to you. Let this message become personal in your life.
Lord, thank you that you know each one of us personally and intimately. You created us, you understand us, and you love us. And Lord, I pray for each person in this room this morning. Whatever it is that they're facing, whatever it is that they're feeling with all this going on around us, that you would meet them where they are. That you would continually speak peace to their hearts and let them know that you're there. In those times, Lord, when we feel you far away, help us, Lord, to take that one step towards you, knowing that you'll take a thousand towards us. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I hide from your love? When I am hurting, it comforts me to know that nothing can take away your love. Nothing can take your love. Thank you, Lord, that we can be real with you. Thank you, Lord, for the reality of who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So glad you could be with us here today. And um, again, we can't hang around in here, but it's a nice, really hot day outside. So if you want to just go outside and visit with each other, make sure you keep an appropriate distance. And uh, may God bless you this week. May you sense and know his presence. Half of you are already going ahead and doing it, so ask up. <laughs> and we leave like we're leaving a wedding. So Gary, you're leading us this today. You are just, everybody just at a distance, follow Gary out the door. God bless you this week. We'll see you next week.